Yeah. Amen. Well, let's uh, let's get into the word. I want to <clears throat> continue um, what we shared last night, but I'm going to take a little different angle, and I want to go to several different <coughs> scriptures in advance. Just to lay some groundwork, and then we'll get into the scriptures in uh, Judges. But we're not going to go there first. Um, and uh, again, if I had a title for this one, this one would be, Who is the Real Hero? <laughs> Who is the Real Hero? Uh, so, I want to start in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews. So, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. When people call Hebrews 11 the, the faith chapter or the hall of faith, I call it Hebrews 11. Wow. Very original. I have meditated on that title long and hard. Uh, Hebrews 11. Are we there yet? Still listos? Listos? Sí. Verse 32. <clears throat> Precious my Spanish. Treinta y dos. And what shall I say more? Or what? And what shall I more say, actually? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of who? Barak. Oh, he made it in. <laughs> and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel and of the prophets. We'll just stop right there. We'll just notice that um, uh, Barak is in the New Testament. And he's listed among those of faith. So there is an aspect of faith, an aspect of faith, that belongs to Barak. We want to discuss that, and we want to, we want to contrast that, and we'll get into the contrast shortly. <clears throat> but um, we need to understand why he is in the New Testament. Because, I mean, remember, I mean, we had Deborah, and we had Barak, and we had Jael. But she went to jail. <laughs> I'm doing that again. <laughs> So, what we want to do now is go through some scriptures, and we want to just build so that we can get to our point, okay? So we're going to go through several scriptures here. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 first. 1 Corinthians 15. And 36. <clears throat> and 1 Corinthians 15 is talking about resurrection. And there are questions people are having about resurrection. Okay? Questions about resurrection. Is there going to be a resurrection? That sort of thing. And what is the basis <coughs> of resurrection? And so as he says what it is right here, verse 35 and 36. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? 
Verse 36, thou, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not made alive except it die. Alright, so there's, there's a question and an answer. A question in verse 35 and an answer in verse 36. The question is, how, um, but some, let's see, my chumans, okay. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? So, how are the, how are the dead raised up? How is it? Oh, oh, we want to be raised up. How? How raised? How does it happen? Okay. And, the, and you, can, you can look into that question being asked and you can see that the person's mind and heart has drawn out a question and their mind and heart are on, I want to be resurrected. And I want to know how. Okay? So, <clears throat> and with what body do they come? In verse 36, thou fool, that's what it starts with, thou fool, almost like, are you foolish? I mean, what is going on? Que pasó? You know, are you, you know, you, you seem to not understand that you're starting at the wrong place. Right? And then he answers him. That which thou sowest is not made alive except it die. Alright. So, um, uh, so let's go to 2 Corinthians. I've got the scripture jotted down on my iPad. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And you're not far, about four pages to the right. And, and here is uh, a picture for us of death and resurrection. Death and resurrection. Now. Not sometime in the future. This chapter. This is the, the verses we're going to read will show absolutely. They will take away all doubt. But this is not talking about a future death and resurrection. This is talking about death and resurrection working in us. Ahora. Now. Okay? So, let's start with uh, verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we who live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So it's talking about mortal flesh, amen? amen. Yeah. This, is a, this is a death and a resurrection that's supposed to be going on now. And this you can, you can read it as much as you want, and you cannot drag this into the future. This is a reality of operating in such a manner with the Lord, where we are, because because Jesus died, right, a long time ago, on the cross, right. So we say, well, Jesus died; he's not going to die again. Okay, he's not going to die for sin again. That's right. He's not. That's done with. The atonement. It's finished. Fini. Now I'm going to French. <laughs> what am I doing? It's like the Holy Ghost came on me. I'm speaking the other language. <laughs> And then verse 12, so then death worketh in us, but life in you. So there's this reality of death and resurrection that is 
that we don't have to look forward to. We're supposed to be involved with right now in our mortal bodies, and we're doing it not for us, but for others. God. Death works in me so that life can work in you. Yeah. Death here, life there. And that's what Jesus yeah. did. Praise but God. you see, it's not by our doing. It's we're bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus. That's what it says, verse 10. And notice the words. We're bearing about the dying, I-N-G. So that is clearly an ongoing process. It's not saying we're bearing about the reality that He died. It's not saying that. That's past tense. He's saying now. And not just now, but ongoing now. Mortal flesh. Death works in me. But it's the, it's the dying, it's, this, it's the self-giving nature of Christ in us. That is giving Himself through our mortal flesh So that others may have life. Okay. So it'd be good to study those scriptures carefully after this to really sit because the context is all it's all it, it's even wider. Because just a few verses up, we know this scripture it says, uh, "We have this treasure in earthen vessels." Everybody, from, how many have ever heard that verse? Before? That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. But then the power. And the working of this treasure is that he lays down his life. So that others may have life. And didn't, it, didn't that, wasn't that what Jesus did on the cross? He died on the cross so that we would have life. But Jesus hadn't changed. We say, well, Jesus came in me. Well, don't you think he's going to be exactly like he was when, you know, when he walked the earth? You say, well... Here he was 2,000 years ago, laying down his life, doing all this, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So is he going to be any different in us? No. He's going to be self-giving. He's going to want to, to give himself, but now we're his body. See, when he was walking the earth, he had a, this kind of body. And what did that body do? It responded to his nature. He touched and healed. He blessed. He died on a cross. Right? That physical body followed his mind and his heart. Well, now we're the real body of Christ. And we have the real Jesus in us. And he wants to live through his body. Okay. So, Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> Philippians 3 9. This is Paul's prayer. <clears throat> Let me borrow this light a little more. Tell me if I'm messing anything up with uh, the camera. God forbid that we mess up the camera. <laughs> and be found in Him. Praise God. That's good. And be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Jesus Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So notice that we're talking about faith. And, and how it fits into this context. Verse 10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering being made conformable unto His death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, mm. though not as though I had already attained. Okay, so he's, he's not... He's talking about attaining to death and resurrection. Mm. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, not as though I already attained. Well, of course not, Paul. You're not dead yet. You're not physically dead. That's why you haven't attained. No, he's not talking about physical death here. 
when he's talking about attaining to the death and resurrection, he's not talking about physical. He's talking about what we saw over in Corinthians. He's talking about, and this is this is what he says. I mean, what a what an amazing statement. He says that there's some things he wants to know, and then some things that he wants literally practical in his life. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. That's what I want to know. But here's what I want to conform to. To be conformed, to be made conformable unto his death. I want to know resurrection. I want to know what it's like to fellowship with him. But I want to be. Praise God. Made conformable mm. to his death. Mm. Wow. wow. See, he's different than us. <laughs> we say, I want to be conformed to resurrection. Give me liberty. Don't give me death. Thanks. <laughs> We're all about life, but he, but there's a, there can't be life without death, right? We, that was our first scripture. There's no life without death. Thou fool! I mean, I'm not calling you that. Paul did, but I'm not. <laughs> you have to realize that there is no, there is no resurrection without death. And if this, if this is present. And we're supposed to be bearing about in our bodies the dying of the Lord. Mm -hmm. If there's death, there will be resurrection. Mm -hmm. Death works in me, but life in you. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. That's the scripture. That's, the, that's not only the scriptures, that's the truth as it is in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then, like I said in verse 12, not as though I'd already attained... Either we're already perfect, but I follow after if I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ. So he's, he's, equating, he's equating this conformity to his death. He's equating this with apprehending something from the Lord. And not in the future. Not as though I don't, you know, in other words, he's saying... We can attain this now, but it's not as if I've got it yet, but I'm pressing toward it now. Does that yes. make sense? Yes. yes. I'm pressing toward, you know, we say, oh, I want to be made conformable to Jesus, conformable. <laughs> and I want to, I want, how about this? I want to be like Him. I want to be in His image. Okay, well, let's start with death. <laughs> let's start with the lamb. Not physical death, not dying someday. But as it said over there in Corinthians, in the first Corinthians, bearing about, or actually second Corinthians, bearing about in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus. And here, being made conformable to his death. And he said, this is what I want. Amen. This was his prayer. <laughs> oh, Lord. Make me conform. He didn't just say, make me dead. He didn't say, make me dead. He said, I want to conform to his death, which yes. was a self-giving death. Yes. Not a physical death. That we bear in our bodies this self-giving nature of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And if there's death, it's going to produce life somewhere. And we're going to get into that in just a second. But I want to make sure that, that we understand, we're at least kind of following that. Because the next part, I think, may be the most important part of everything, even after we get into Judges. <coughs> so... If that's, that's true, then let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. Alright. 
Hebrews chapter 11 is about faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I don't know if you noticed that most of the scriptures we refer to in relationship to death and resurrection were an act of faith. The word faith was used in those verses. An act of faith. In other words, there's something that you believe about Jesus and the way Jesus is. And you have faith in that. And it causes you to um, conform. Or it causes you here. How about this? Maybe a little better word. There's something that you believe about Jesus in relationship to his self-giving nature that causes you to want to be in his hands. Yes. If you really see it, it draws your heart. It draws your heart. Especially if you see that he wants you to be like that so that you can be one with him in that nature. Okay, so we're, I'm going to go. We're going to read through Hebrews 11, and then we're going to carefully divide it up because it actually is divided into three sections, not the whole thing. We're starting at verse 32. <coughs> okay, Hebrews 11, verse 32. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and of Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in fight, turned to flight <clears throat> the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Okay, that's the first part, number one. Now it says, but there were others. Their faith was different. And this is number two. There's three of them here. This is number two. Uh, verse 35, and others, and others were tortured. Anybody see a change of emphasis here? Yes. Everything looks like victory up to this point. But now, he says, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Okay? So that's faith in another form. That's the second form. Barak was included in the first form. But this is others. Okay? And then it says, verse 36, and others. This is the third form. This is different. And we'll go back and we're going to go talk about these individual things. But it's all listed under faith. Okay? Yeah. So verse 36, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, uh, they were sawn asunder, uh, were tested, were slain with the, the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And these all, having received witness through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, Amen. that they without us would not be perfect. Amen. Okay. So, <clears throat> the three categories are, that are counted as faith are these. The first one was the longest one, starting with verse 32, which included Barak. And it says that they, um, they did all of these victorious things. Okay? These were the charismatics, not really. 
I'm, I'm just joking. There's actually, there's actually something in here that kind of throws a different angle. But I want you to notice verse 33, uh, who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises. That's real important. This category obtains promises. Okay? The next thing to notice is verse 34. Um, Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. This category have embraced weakness. Now, we'll get into that as we get into um, uh, Judges 4 and the whole situation with Bar Barak. Because we want to see this. We want to see this there. Amen? Mm -hmm. We want to see this there. Well, what, what, what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see with Barak and the rest of these that they became weak that Jesus might be their strength. Okay. They became weak that Jesus might be their strength. And the, the manifestation of the promise of if you go into death or whatever it is, the promise will be victory on some level. And these guys got to see the victory Immediate. That's right. Immediate. All right. Category two starts in verse 35. Um, after talking about women receiving their raised their dead raised to life, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Okay. So this is the second category, and these. Or be you know they're being tortured, they're being um, uh, put under attack and pressure, and they know that they can pray, and if they are in weakness, Jesus will be their strength, like category one. But they choose not to do that. They are, as it were, staying down in death so that they might see a better resurrection. The deeper the death, the, the greater the resurrection. Okay. And they're saying, you know, I could get out of this if I just want to go with my flesh and what I don't like and everything. I'll just get out of this and I'll just be in weakness. Forget this torture stuff or whatever. I'll just, I'll just be weak and let Jesus come forth and then live in the victory and it'll be wonderful. This, this group is saying, no, I'm not going to escape. I'm not going, I can. I can be in category one, amen? But I'm not going to do it because I'd like to see a better resurrection, more of Jesus come forth. Amen. Yeah, we're, we're not talking about heaven and hell. We're not talking about you're going to get 15 crowns instead of one here. This is talking about more of Jesus. More of Jesus. More it's talking about what we talked about with death and resurrection working in us. And then uh, in Philippians, that we might we may be made conformable to his death, that we might see his resurrection. Okay? and attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Alright. So then, now the third category is verse 36. <clears throat> and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tested, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And, and these all, these all, you would think it would include them all, but I'll, I'll show you that it doesn't. And these all, having received witness through faith, received not the promise. Okay. So let's 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 
go through them. You got the ones, the first group, they go down into weakness so that Christ may be their strength. There are plenty of scriptures that validate that. And you all know that. But there's plenty of scriptures that validate that. So it's a form of death. They're dying to any strength that they have that Christ may be their strength. But because it's really more weakness than death, they're, they're expecting immediate Satisfaction. They want to see Jesus come up in victory. All right. The second group, they are, they are, they are being tortured or whatever in a, in a bad situation, and they, they think, you know, I could just turn this into category one. I could just be weak, that Christ be my strength, and there'll be a victory. Or I can stay down in Christ's death, as it were, His bearing about in our body, His death, so that a better resurrection will come forth. Okay? A better resurrection will come forth. Um, and this resurrection, this better resurrection, is going to be in relationship to them. Yeah. It is. It's going to be, I mean, they, they went down into a deeper death, and, there's going to, uh, and that deeper death was this bearing about of the dying of the Lord Jesus, and there's going to be a, deep, a greater manifestation of Christ as the resurrection. Okay? And they will, they will be a partaker of that. Okay? Uh, they'll be, say it like this, they'll be partakers of the promises. Because yeah. that's yeah. what it said. Okay. But this third category, and notice, again, these, this is all chapter 11. This is all faith. <laughs> this is all faith. This other group, it never says that they looked for resurrection. <laughs> that they expected it, they never took themselves out of, uh, it would be like saying, you know, uh, uh, I know that um, by, by not reacting, I'm trying to just come up with something right, by not reacting uh, against all of this attack, people saying stuff for doing this, but by not reacting against that, and and just staying down in Jesus' death and not justifying, not trying to, you know, um, that in a little while I'll have a better resurrection because I stayed in death longer. Or, um, anybody ever read my book, The Ashes of the Red Heifer? Mm -hmm. Or that. <laughs> or, I'm ashes. I live by Christ crucified. My purpose in life isn't for me to get something out of this, but for others to get something out of this. That's what I live for. And the proof of that is um, verse 39. And these all, having received witness through faith, receive not the promise. They they said, I don't I don't receive that that release of Christ in victorious life through me. And here's what it says. Here, where, you, you say, well, they die. They, it's a death, right? Mm -hmm. Well, where does the life go? Because there, if there's a death, there's a resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. Where does the life go? And he says it in the very next verse. God having some, provided some better thing for us. Yes. For us, that they without us should not be made perfect because you have tied yourself to people maybe in the next generation or generations to come. You're not looking for it in your yes. life. You're not looking for it in your ministry. You're not looking for it. You're staying intentionally down into debt and may never come up out of debt. 
that one day after you're long gone, some other group life just breaks forth in. Now, I mean, I've seen this. You've, you've seen it, but maybe you didn't recognize it. Um, uh, do you remember, um, what was it, Dr. Dr. Livingston? Mm -hmm. Yes. And he went down into Africa, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and he went down there, and he, he went into the farthest dark center of Africa, and he went there to save souls. And while he was there, he saved one native, and he called him Friday, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and he saved this one native, and he spent the rest of his life in Africa, in the darkest jungles, in death, trying to win the Africans, and only won one, and when the, and and years, years and years and years passed, and they didn't, they couldn't even hear from him because he was so deep into Africa at that time. No cell cell phones, no telegraph, and it, the time went so long that they sent somebody to find him, and he went in and they found his little area finally after checking and all this stuff, and. They found his guy Friday, and his his man said the one the one only that got saved. Um, he died on his knees with his Bible, like just leaned over, and he died, and he went to be a fool. And people said, "Get ready for this." What a waste. <laughs> what a waste. Okay. Anybody ever heard of a guy named Reinhard Bonnke? Okay. This guy comes in our lifetime. This, you know, Livingston was not our lifetime. And this guy comes in our lifetime. And he goes into Africa and he sets up huge tents and the Africans flood to Jesus in droves. Incredible. And people go, oh, what a man of God Reinhard Bonnke is. But he's just reaping the harvest. Livingston's the one who died. And he did it number three in category three. He said, I'm not coming up out of death. I'm not looking for anything that will come back to me. I'm not looking for a greater resurrection for me. I'm staying down in this till I die. I'm ashes. I'm the ashes of the red heifer. And I'm not going to explain all that, but that, that's scriptural and there's a lot of meaning in that. And he said, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just go there. And I believe that life comes out of death and that Christ is in me and Christ is self-giving and Christ is pouring out and 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 that, that I'm going to stay here and then I don't know. I won't see the future. I won't see what's coming. But I believe in life out of death. I believe in it. And I'm going to tell you that I believe that many revivals that you hear about that there was probably somebody in a generation before who laid down their life, went into death with Christ, and then this revival springs up and everybody goes to the, to the, you know, it's like a harvest field. If there was, imagine if there was a harvest field and there were two main laborers. One was to sow and to, you know, to, to do that. And then when the harvest came up, someone else came along and did that. So all of the people in the town see the man sowing and laboring and working and, you know, going into death, sweating and all this kind of stuff. And they go, gosh, you know, it's taking so long. And then when it comes time for the harvest to come up, this other guy comes in and starts picking it and putting it in the basket. You know? And they go, oh! What a man of God. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Look at the fruit. Mm -hmm. 
just look at it. Look at the phone. I know. Sorry. I know, me too. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And, and, and you, you see, you know, and, 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 but that's us. See, that's us. If you don't, you know, thou fool, he's going, how will the resurrection be? Tell us. He goes, foolish one. Don't you understand? We don't. We we can't even talk about resurrection. Let's talk about death, and resurrection will come. Amen. Amen. Everything? No. Okay. Start <laughs> over. <laughs> you had me there. But now I don't remember. Uh, simply this, that that the scripture says um, in Corinthians that we read it, and you probably remember it, that the man asked, you know, how will the resurrection come? Mm -hmm. And and Paul didn't say, just just trust, it's gonna happen. Just just keep your faith up, okay? He said, foolish one. Don't you understand? Resurrection only comes out of the dead. And, and in those verses, um, he's identifying to us a principle that we live according to these other scriptures whereby we understand that principle in God and that we live, uh, we bear about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus. Or we pray uh, that I would, I would be. See, I, I want to know the power of His resurrection, but I want to be conformed to His death, so that I will know the power of His resurrection. So that's the that's the basis that we're on. So um, let me just make sure. Yes. In, in Corinthians 15, verse 35, they said, What sort of body will be raised up? Were they talking about what would they be like when they grow up? I don't know what their question is. What would they like when they die? Or what sort of resurrection is going to happen as a result of us going into death? Well, I think, it's, I, think, I think it's really preaching the cross there. And if you follow it out, it, you'll see, I think, that it is. And that is, they're saying, well... You know, they're really trying to figure out this resurrection thing. That's what chapter 15 is. I mean, they're really working at the resurrection side. And Paul is really trying to drag them back into, there can't be a resurrection unless something dies. You know? so, so they're saying, well, what, what body will it come in? And, um, and he says, well, there's different kind of seeds, and then there's, there's a different kind of a resurrection body. A seed is what you plant, and that's the body of yeah. death. Yeah. And when it dies, this is the body of resurrection. Mm -hmm. But this only happens because this seed fell into the ground. Yeah. You, could, you could put in different seeds like those three others, like you put in the, the, the gentle seed we want to meet it. Absolutely. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And there is a, you know, I think there's even a progression in uh, Hebrews 11 here, and the progression is that we learn, I mean, the first thing to learn is John 12, 24. Except a seed fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, if, if it no die, <laughs> no fruit. If it die, fruit. So, all right, then what I'm going to do, I am going to cut this a little bit short, but I'll tell you what, what we just discussed, this is the most important part right here. Okay. This is the most important part. And maybe, uh, I, I hope you, you jot down the scriptures, because they, the order the Lord gave me is a very good order for, and I didn't come up with it, the Lord did. It's a really good order for studying this verse, and then go to this one, and it's like, add to your faith, you know, this, and then this, and this. And you, you'll see a picture. It's like, a, it's like the Lord is an artist. And he, he starts painting this picture. And it looks one way, and then it, he develops it. And, uh, and these verses will help you. They really, really will help you. <clears throat> um, and then 
then this thing in Hebrews 11, these three things. You know, the study I did on Hebrews 11 where I showed that death was at the, at the heart of everything from the beginning of Hebrews to the point we got to. Do you remember, anybody remember what, where, if anybody runs across it, I'd like to have it transcribed because I keep referring to it with people and I can't remember. But anyway, it was, it, it was a good study and very, you know, carefully done to show that Hebrews 11, the faith that is there is a faith that life comes out of death. Abraham, his body as good as dead, then the seed comes. Uh, on and on. It, it does stuff like that. Well, let's do a, a, a quick thing here. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to read the scriptures for you. And you tell me, because uh, it, it's going to relate to either Deborah, Barak, or Jael. Okay. In other words, we're going to be in, in uh, 4 and 5 of Judges. And I want you to tell me who's the hero there. <laughs> okay, ready? I'm, ju I'm just going to read it. It's better if you, you, can, you can write down verse so-and-so if you want or whatever, but it's better if you just listen and you tell me who's the hero. All right? <clears throat> um, and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time, and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah. Who's the hero there? Deborah dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah. The palm tree. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody's the hero there. There's something wrong there, isn't there? Yeah. You know, it's like... I don't know. It, it would be like if, if I was the pastor of New Creation Fellowship and I named it Randy's Church. <laughs> how, many, would, how many people would want to come? Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't even want to come. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, another ver another uh, verse. Uh, and this is Deborah speaking. And I will... Draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. Yeah. Who's the hero there? I. No. I. Good one. Who's the hero there? I, but I isn't the hero. Is I is shamefully declaring herself. Okay. Um, maybe it'll help for me to at least give you guys the, where the verses are. That was. Um, first one was verse 5. The first one was 4 and 5. And the second one was verse 7 and 8. Okay? But here's 8. Okay, now listen, this is in contrast to 7, which she said, I will, I will. And Barak said unto her, If thou go not with me, then. Uh, if thou go with me, then I will. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. Who is the hero of that verse? Barak. Barak. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here's why. I put, uh, she will deliver the enemy into Barak's hands. She is the one with power, position, strength, and confidence. Verse 8, but Barak is weak. Mm -hmm. Do you see why he's in... Yeah. Where? What am I talking about? Hebrews 11, <laughs> wow. verse 32. He, out of weakness was made strong. Yeah. That's why, and you'll notice going through here, that he was never trying to take charge. And he let, you know, in the Lord's power, in the Lord's way, it is you become weak and he will strengthen you. You become strong and he will humble you. Right? So that's why his name's there. Does it make sense that it's exactly in category one? Yes. All right, let's keep going. Um, verse 9. 
um, this is Deborah speaking, and she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor, talking to Barak, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman, and Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. All right, who's the hero there? It depends on whether she means Jill or Barak, Deborah. Yeah, she doesn't, she, I don't think she knows, and, and I'll prove that as we go. <laughs> yeah, you've read it. <laughs> so she's, she's talking about herself. She thinks that she's going to be the one that delivers, and it's J.L. that does it. Okay, and let's see. And she says this, Thou take it, uh, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. All right. Is Deborah mentioned in the New Testament? No. She's not mentioned. Is Barak mentioned? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, she says, you're going to go do this battle, and da 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 but it's not going to be for your honor. But he's the only one God mentioned in the New Testament. God had his name put in. God honored Barak. That's right. Hmm. All right, so I put uh, verse 9, whatever Barak does will not be for his honor. She claims it. <laughs> uh, but in the New Testament, God did give him the honor, as if he was solely the one. And then the real, the real victory belongs to the cross, applied by J.L. <laughs> Okay, then verse 10, here it goes. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went with him. All right, so here Barak is calling them, and they gather to him, but she says, this is my army and this is my plan, and, but they're gathering to him, meaning they're not seeing her as the power behind this. They're seeing a man that's in weakness as having the power of God. And they gather unto Him. Mm -hmm. And then it says in verse 10 that He leads them, and she actually goes with Him uh, instead of it being the other way around. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. He is in weakness and God is leading Him. And God honored Him in Hebrews because of that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Verse 13, And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, all the people that were with him, and we read this before, and that he has overwhelming forces. Okay, so, he's got, you know, so many people and chariots and all this kind of stuff, and Barak's got 10,000 people. He's in weakness. There's no way he can win this battle. But he's trusting the Lord. Okay? He's trusting in the Lord who, uh, how did it say, uh, through weakness, gains, it, their strength was made perfect mm -hmm. with Barak's name. Verse 14, Debs, Deborah said unto Barak, <coughs> Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thy hand. Is not the Lord gone on before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. So, so Deborah tells Barak, not her, but he tells him, go fight. Okay. This is like the high priest, or the, the high priest. He kills the lamb every year, but he never lays down his life. Mm -hmm. Until Jesus comes. He's the first high priest that also became the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. First one. All the other high priests were too busy killing lambs mm -hmm. and not laying down their life. It's a big deal. Um, and now, uh, Judges uh, chapter 5. Verse 1. Go with me. Yes. Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinahom, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Okay. First of all, um, God didn't avenge them. 
God didn't avenge them. God didn't avenge them. God didn't avenge them. God didn't avenge them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> God didn't avenge them. It started in, in uh, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, and said they sinned against God. Yes. They sinned against God. You know, what did I write down here? They sing a song of God avenging them as if they were righteous, but Judges 4, 1 through 2 shows that they were in sin. That's why all this happened. God avenged them. No, you were in sin and you, they never even repented. They never said, well, we're sorry for what we, you know, leaving you. And so they, so it's been twisted now. Um, okay, again, uh, verse 3. Who's the hero here? Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. That's Deborah. Who's the hero there? Nobody. Well, God, I guess. <laughs> wow. Anybody see a little, little bit of flesh in there? Eh? Like three times. Anyway. You know, remember what Satan said? I will be like the Most High God. I will exalt my throne to the heavens. I will sit in the sides of the north. Alright, verses uh, 6 and 7. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied, and the travelers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose, a mother in Israel. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Stop, okay. <laughs> she, she's talking about how bad things were until she came along. <laughs> if I hadn't have been here, you people all would be messed up bad. Yeah. She's taking all the glory here. She, she attributes the victory to her being raised up and takes the place as a mother over all Israel. Okay, verse 12. Awake, awake, Deborah. Amen. <laughs> Wake up, woman. <laughs> awake, awake. Utter a song. <laughs> Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive. Where's that at? Ephesians 4, 7 through 9. And you, you should search it out. It's an incredible reason why Paul quoted this from the Old Testament and put it in Ephesians. But you, you're going to have to see this. Not through the normal eyes. You have to see it through God's eyes. Mm -hmm. All right. Judges uh, 5.13. Um, no, let's see. Yeah, and I, don't, I somehow didn't have that one down. Whatever it is, she took the credit. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm Maybe she didn't. Don't bet on it. Don't place your bets there. Okay, so, you know... Uh, verse uh, 15 through 17, I want you to notice how she does give credit. Thank God she gives credit, okay? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Not, I'm sorry. That was verses before. Here she's, she's kind of complaining about who didn't help her. Okay? For the divisions of Reubens, there were great thoughts of heart. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds? She's saying, why didn't you come fight among the sheepfolds? to hear the bleeding of the flocks. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Gilead abode yet beyond Jordan. And why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his in his breeches. In his breeches. <laughs> Good, thank God. <laughs> Gracias a Dios. Um, but listen, listen to her response now. For them not joining in. No, no. Barak didn't say, you know, what is wrong with you people? He took what God gave him. Amen. 
and when in the strength of the Lord. Mm -hmm. okay. But she's complaining because these people didn't have. Now look at verse 23. This is still in this same rant. <laughs> Curse ye, Meroz, said the angel of the Lord. No, he didn't. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants there because they came not to the help of the Lord to help the Lord against the mighty. Folks, the Lord won. Yes, he routed it. They didn't need to come. They shouldn't be. They should. Just, everyone should just acknowledge this was the Lord's That's doing. Right. You know? Yes. And praise God. Hallelujah. It's like curse ye. I'm a mother. Listen to me. Talking to you. Uh, verse twenty-eight through thirty-one. Still, chapter five. This is what Deborah says against Sisera and, and, his, and his mother. <laughs> this is 5, verse 28 through 31. Is that right? I mean, is it yes. in there? Yeah. Alright, I'm just writing all down. Yeah, no problem. Uh, the mother of, this is Deborah talking. The mother of Sisera looked out at a window and cried through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Remember, this is the one J.L. put a nail through his head. <laughs> she didn't do anything to it. Okay? Yeah. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariot? Her wise ladies answered her, Yea, she returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? To Sisera, a prey of different colors, a prey of different colors of needlework, of different colors, she's into the color thing, um, of needlework on both sides. <laughs> you, know, you know, it sounds, it sounds to me like mom's not looking for Cicero so much as this, this colorful stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that before, but I got it now. Anyway, <laughs> um, um, meet, meet for the next of them who take the spoils, so let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest forty years. So the enemy now had no one to lead them by the method of strength. Cicero was dead. Deborah didn't defeat that method, but she lived according to it. The method of strength, as opposed to weakness. Deborah didn't defeat that method. She lived according to it. You, even if you seem to defeat it, in other words, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. If you take a sword and you defeat somebody, you say, you shouldn't be using the sword, and you cut their head off with a sword. <laughs> there went your sermon. <laughs> Deborah didn't defeat that method. She didn't. She actually released more of that spirit into the earth. But J.L. defeated that method. J.L. ministered, went the extra mile, uh, and then did nothing but apply the cross. And when you apply the cross, that's a death that's already done by Christ. It's finished. It's finished. But you are applying that to your sisters, your enemies, your but you're not doing it in the same spirit. You know, you're not. You're not doing it in the same spirit. You're simply standing with Christ crucified. And you're living according to that. And that's what spirit you're releasing. So that's it. That was a whirlwind, wasn't it? Oh, it's a wonderful world. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus and we are we are hungry for Jesus, the Lamb of God. 
Lord, we don't want to be puffed up, and we don't want to be prideful, and we don't want to think that we're something, and we don't want to release that spirit into the earth. We want to be conformed, not just to the image of Christ, but the image of Christ is to be made conformable unto his death, so that in his sowing of his own rights and his own things that are that would be put before others, in him sowing those, a harvest will come up. And not only did he do that 2,000 years ago, but he wants to do that in us, Father. He wants to do that. And he wants us to live by a, a cycle of death and life and death and life and to see how that actually works in the scriptures yeah. and to see how it works by your life alone and it's not a work of the flesh and it is not adding to the, the work of the cross that's finished mm -hmm. at all. It is merely, as it were, enforcing yeah. it in our own mm -hmm. life against yes. the enemies that, that war against our mind or that are external to us. And so, Father, we just ask you to to let seeds fall into us. Yes. But Lord, we don't want to be complacent and just say, well, Lord, then you're going to let these seeds fall in, into me, Father, but that we search the Scriptures, that we look these things up, that we meditate on them, that we, we keep our, our focus there long enough to see you by revelation mm -hmm. and not just hear, just ink on white paper, not just read ink on white paper and think we've got it. There's a spirit. You said, Jesus, your words are spirit and life, not just ink and paper. And so, Father, we want the words on paper to turn into spirit and life in our being. We want the yes. scriptures to become living word within yes. us. Yes. Yes. And so, Father, yes. um, I just ask you, I just ask you for my sake and for all of our sake, that you will just continue to lead us and guide us deeper into your Son, to know him, to conform to him, to be, to have his image, to have his life and nature, so that he will get what satisfies his heart. That he will, that Jesus will get the desires of his heart and not just us go to Jesus for the desires of our heart alone. Put him first. Put him only as we embrace the cross. Father, I just pray for anyone who would misread what has been shared misread what my, my point is and I, Lord you know I don't have time to explain every point mm -hmm. but I pray for them that your spirit would be on them yes. and that you would just, just uh, whatever questions or fears arise when they hear certain things just comfort them first of all but then give them the comfort that you will lead them into you yes. and yes there are green pastures and yes there are valleys of of shadows of death and you will lead us through all of it and you'll bring us into the light of the land of the living so father thank you thank you for this this time this conference time this hungering time this this burning heart that wants to get past even just seeing you in the scriptures like on the road to Emmaus. But to see, have you revealed to us as our life. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for making Jesus our life and making us one with him. Yes. To be come as a bride to him. And to bring joy and satisfaction to his heart. Jesus.